hello guys welcome back to your new tutorial in this tutorial i am gonna show you how you can start with the dynamodb and aws Boto 3 Boto 3 is a aws python library and it is provided by in the form of the sdk so that user can interact with the aws services using this python library and Amazon AWS DynamoDB is a fast and flexible NoSQL database service for all applications that need consistent single digit millisecond latency at any scale. And it is a fully managed cloud database and supports both documents and key value store models. According to the forest, Amazon DynamoDB is the most popular NoSQL cloud database and there are many customers which are using AWS DynamoDB such as Airbnb, Netflix and Adobe. There are a lot of benefits such as a fast consistent performance, event driven programming, flexible and fine grain control. There are many uses of this DynamoDB such as uh, you can use it into the ad tech. In the ad tech suppose that you want to show the ad to the user you can use this uh, technology Amazon AWS DynamoDB. Let me show you this uh, graph by enlarging it into the full screen. Here is a graph, it's advertising services and I'm going to explain you how it works. So it has a user and user is connected with the cloud front which provides the uh, uh, fast services to the user, content services to the user and then there is a static file uh, repository which stores the file and here this is DynamoDB and another one is the EC2 instance. It is auto scaling EC2 instance which automatically scale based on the load given to the EC2 instance. And then the elastic load balancer it balance according to the need of the user. So it is a kind of a, of a closed loop feedback between the EC2 instance and the users. So another application is the gaming. In the gaming, uh, suppose that you want to store uh, gamers data on the cloud such as uh, score of that person, ID, name and uh, other information. So that can be very easily stored on the cloud using AWS. So it has SES, simple email services, DynamoDB is connected with the auto scaling EC2 instances and then it is connected with the uh, users right. So the user that is the gamer its data is being stored on the DynamoDB table through EC2 auto scaling instances right. So apart from this gaming and ad tech technology there is another technology where you can use that is IoT and uh, apart from these three there are other fields also you can use this but in the IoT if we uh, describe this suppose that this is users connected with the Redshift suppose that there are a lot of data of the users so that can be stored into the Redshift and uh, then it is connected with the Amazon S3 Amazon S3 is a simple storage services used to store uh, static files and then uh, elastic uh, map reducer and then there is you can see a uh, DynamoDB and DynamoDB is connected with the EC2 instances uh, and then SQS simple queue services. So SQS uh, provides services by queuing the a lot of request into a, a queue right. So suppose that if uh, users are giving a lot of uh, um, requests so SQS manage those requests and uh, provide in a better way to operate those requests. Now let me show you how you can program this DynamoDB by using a Boto3 Python library. So here I am going to create a new file into sublime text right. So in this tutorial I am not going to type directly into a command cell but uh, I am going to create a python file and then I will execute this python file using a terminal. So as usual we will also import Boto3 library and uh, then we need to create a resource. So it is a DynamoDB resource DynamoDB is equal to Boto3.resource and then DynamoDB. 
Now suppose that we want to create a new table. So for that we need to give the table, table is the response which will be returned by the dynamodb.create table and then create table accepts a lot of uh, key parameters, key such as the table name. So let us give a, a table name as a new table, okay. So this is the table name and the table name must be uh, unique in your region otherwise it would not uh, accept that table name, right. Now the key schema, so the, in the key schema we need a two parameter attribute name and key type. So in the attribute name I am going to give just the user name, okay and key type. So the user name would be a key type of the hash, it is a hash function, okay and uh, now this is the key schema and uh, another attribute would be the last name. Okay. So, that means we can access the table uh, using username and the last name. So, this is the two attribute which I am going to uh, uh, give to this table and key type of this last name would be the range. Okay. So, these are the key schema and now we need a attribute definition. Right. So, in the attribute definitions okay so in the attribute definitions i want uh, attribute name okay and uh, <coughs> that's the user name and then that would be the attribute type of uh, s that is the string okay and uh, another attribute as i have already given there the last name so the attribute name would be again last underscore name and its attribute type would be a string type. Now provision throughput, okay. So the read write cycle throughput. So let us define the throughput. So you can define it using provision throughput equal to read capacity unit that is equal to the 5 and apart from read capacity unit we need to also provide write capacity unit. So, the write capacity unit is also 5 and always keep in your mind Amazon web services charge you based on the read write in DynamoDB. So, always keep in mind okay, if you are using a free tier services. So, now let us create a table okay. uh, sorry now let us create a table and wait until table is created. So, you can do it using table dot meta dot client dot get underscore waiter right table exists. So, it will check whether table exists or not and wait until table name equal to the new table exists into the data base. So, now the print table dot item okay, count. So, if it prints 0 that means we have successfully created a table at Amazon web services. Now, let us run. So, it is showing some type of error most probably uh, exception occurred at create table operation. So, somehow uh, attribute definitions is missing right. So, this definition is missing a last name and username it is showing let me see what I can do yes. So, the last yes. So, the last name now let us run it ok it is running. So, it is creating a table that is why it is taking a little bit time and it will wait until the table is we created. So, however, it may take few seconds. Uh, in my case, it took 5 seconds. In your case, it may take, take uh, 5 to 10 seconds or less than 5 seconds. It depends on the speed of that instance and the availability, right. So, the, of course, the table is newly created. That is why the table count is coming to the 0. That is when there is no content into the table. Now, table has been created. 
Now what we need to do? Now let's check, suppose that if table is already created and you want to check when this table is created and you can check it very easily using table dot creation underscore date underscore time right so the table is equal to the dynamo db dot table and new table okay so the print table dot creation underscore date underscore time oh somehow i have written that data we need to fix that uh, date in last line if you see Ah, that's the line number. Uh, ha, yes, one more thing. The table is already exists, so we need to uh, uh, comment this if you want to. If you want to run this script again, now you can see another here mistakes is table dot creation underscore date, right? So you can see here the date has been given. So it was created on twenty seventh August twenty seventeen at five thirty two at the 0, 05 and 30 minutes ahead of the GMT time right so here we have got the table date when the new table was created now let's create a new item into the table right so how we can do we can use table dot put item so we need to use here table dot put item and now we need to give the item descriptions such as the username, first name, last name, age and account type. Okay, so now age is 26, account type is, let's use as a standard user. Okay. So now if we run this code, uh, the data would be uploaded, uh, I mean the table, uh, this data would be, you know, loaded into the table, right? Great. So let's run it. Uh -huh. Somehow I made a little mistake there into the first name. Uh, let me see what is the mistake. Uh, first name. So it's a first name. Somehow I made a mistake. I think I have missed the comma after the, all these attributes. Uh, I space would not work. I think it's a comma. I'm sure it's a comma. Let me see. Let's run it and uh, try. Uh, yes, it's a comma. Okay, we need to give there a comma. Okay, great. So now it has successfully run and uh, previous uh, script is also there table creation date time. That's why that is coming. Now let's get the item from the table. So we can use table dot get underscore item. Okay, so the response equal to table dot get underscore item and key type as a key schema. Our key schema was the username and the last name. So I want to query with the username and the last name. So the username was Lashvikan and last name was the Tiwari. Okay. And now the item equal to response. And now I want item which was red. Print it and let's see it. Run it into a terminal and you can see username or first name, last name account type and the age 
everything is given there that's really cool i think uh, in last 15 minutes you have learned a lot uh, how you can use a python go to three library and how you can access a dynamo db now suppose that if you want to update a table you can do that also so let's update the table okay you can do it using table dot update underscore item okay so here we need to give the key name okay the key which you want to update so the username is Lashmikant and the last name is the Tiwari so this is the key so the this uh, script will look for this key into uh, DynamoDB database and it will update with the this new uh, new line of code with the update expression that is equal to the set age equal to well one value one okay so i'm going to define here value one that is the kind of dynamic programming techniques so expression attribute values so here the expression attribute values there is only one value that's the value one okay so earlier I have set my age 26 and now I am going to set it the 25. Uh, I don't know what uh, my age is I think it is 25 or 26 it does not matter. So let us set it the 25 so value 1 is 25 and uh, now let us copy the get item here ok. So here I am going to copy that. Uh, get item. So, after uh, updating this table, I am going to again retrieve the information. Now, here in the result, you will see a two different type of the age. So, in the first one, my age will be the 26 and after updating the my age, then the age would be 25, right. So, see the first one age in the last decimal 26 and in the second one, my age is 25. Isn't it cool? See the Python and the Boto3 library you can use to do anything. You can access any AWS services by using your terminals and the Python code itself. You don't need to go with your console. It's really very cool. Now let's delete all these tables. So if you want to delete these tables, you can do it very easily. Table dot delete underscore item and now here we need to give the key ok. I mean you can access this table by providing just this key name ok. So the key name, username Lashmikant and the last name. So as I have given this into the key schema ok. So the Tiwari. Now the table uh, if you uh, press the, uh, let us save it. And after saving, uh, we need to run it. So after deleting, let us uh, check, uh, let us try to access that table, okay. Uh, definitely you will get error here. Since table does not exist after deletion and it will try to access that table, definitely as I told you, there is error after item delete. So the table has been deleted. So if the table is deleted, then we cannot access that table that's mean we cannot get any item from that table so thank you so much for watching this tutorial and stay tuned for the next one and you please subscribe this channel so that you can directly get the update into your inbox so i'll be doing a lot of aws and the python and the boto3 coding uh, throughout this tutorial series and you will be getting this update directly into your inbox thanks for watching